to the book of James. Hebrews James. Uh, John, uh, John Ray, what's up, man? How you doing? Uh, much love. Keep it up, brother Richard. Welcome, Kiara. Welcome. This is this is a uh, good to be back. Um, it's been quite a while, um, and um, yeah, just choose. It's better. Yes, it has been very long, Kiara. Um, didn't actually think I'd be back home right now. Where I'm at, I thought I would have been actually in my own place or whatever. But, you know, I'm glad to be back in my own room. Um, how are you doing, Kiara? How are you doing, Richard? Jordan, my man, how have you been? How have you been? Uh, it's been rough. I uh, have been recovering from a cough that's been really affecting me um unfortunately for the last like uh more than three weeks yeah uh three weeks in one day pretty much um audrey welcome to the love hey megan how are you welcome welcome sibongile what's happening welcome to the love um yeah praise god uh let me just put something on here just like that that's better uh hey mia yeah you are without a doubt the og absolutely welcome back to the love hi long time no see yes audrey long time as well hello haven't seen you in a while nice to have you back jacqueline yes it's good to be back praise god um thanks for joining in to the love and yeah, you know, based on on the titles, nothing, um, any, nothing specific. We're just going to spend some time with God, pray, and I know God will definitely speak to some of us. Um, we're going to read a bit in the book of James. James has been on my heart quite a lot recently, especially James chapter one. There's a lot in James chapter one that you can pull out that I want us to do a bit of a study on tonight. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna. Do a bit of that i want you guys also to let me know if the music is um uh, okay is it um too low or not loud enough i'm using a method of kind of uh i'm just testing in the moment but yeah guys when we give it another minute or two we're gonna just take time to open up in prayer and then we will um We'll uh, get into to Bible reading and also guys, if you have any questions or you have any prayer requests, then you must welcome at any given time to put that in the chat. Aaron, welcome back to the live. And guys, I see those who are tapping the screen uh, definitely boosts the live. So um, yeah, thanks for those who are tapping the screen. Forever grateful for God's guidance, love, and protection over us all. Exactly, Kiara. I mean, it can be a very cliche thing to say, but after what I experienced um, in, in Cape Town with being robbed and all that, I definitely saw, yeah, without a doubt, um, God's protection is so real. Um, it's, it's not just something that we just say on a daily basis. It is really a fact. Hey, Jen. Welcome to the love um how are you doing jen i love the book of james uh good solid meat it is meat richard it's more meat than milk and a lot of people unfortunately um if they find it difficult to uh grab on to everything that james has to offer because it's deep and it's hard sometimes for us to bring ourselves into alignment with um, what god speaks to us uh, through james but yeah it's been long jen i've been I've been good recently, but it's been quite a hassle. I had been sick, but by the grace of God, healed up uh, really nicely now. Sorry, it just feels like um, the uh, the focus is back, yeah. Uh, how are you guys doing? We're going to pray in a moment, and then we're going to get into some Bible reading. So, welcome to those who just joined. See you guys tapping the screen. Well done for boosting the love that's uh what we like to see adrian welcome to the love i hope you're doing well 
great to have you back um also guys time of q a and prayer requests if you have a prayer request put it in the chat we are to pray for each other and we are to take up each other's questions as the bible says uh so uh as a friend sharpens a friend so iron sharpens iron i think it goes the other way actually but you know you know what i mean maurice welcome to the love and yeah let's pray guys let's take this time to open up in prayer and then we will um spend some time in god's word let me just bring this chair up a bit um Uh, Varashni, welcome to the live. How are you? I feel we should pray for boldness. We can definitely include that in the prayer, Aaron. I'd like to uh, do that. Thanks for pointing that out. Appreciate the follow, Whitney. Let's take some time to pray right now, guys. I just want to pray over you and pray that we can open our hearts to receive from God's word tonight as we read in the book of James. So, yeah, let's pray. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for this time together on this live stream. Thank you for bringing us all back together, Lord, in one piece. And not only have we been able to get back on track, Lord, that we've been stronger than we ever have ever been before. So thank you for making us stronger, for pruning us, for um, bringing us to a higher place. Father God, as we receive your word tonight, I pray, Holy Spirit, that we would open our hearts to receiving wisdom, revelation, and understanding from your word. Lord Jesus, I invite you and your presence here tonight on the live. Have your way on the live. Touch the people's lives tonight, Lord Jesus. And whatever you want to do, Holy Spirit, in this time, I thank you that you would have your way. In Jesus' mighty name, we also thank you, Father God, for boldness in our hearts we know holy spirit that you are the one who brings us boldness so help us to rely more on you holy spirit and we give you father god all the glory all the praise and honor for tonight and for blessing your people in jesus mighty name amen praise god <clears throat> Yeah, welcome to those who just joined, guys. I'm not going to make it too strict. I'm not going to put the comments off or anything. Um, we're just going to make it a nice, chilled Bible reading, Bible study thing. And uh, we'll learn and grow and talk about it as we go. Um, Jesus is the only way. Welcome to the live. Thank you for the support. Thanks for the roses. I appreciate that. Um uh beast mode what's happening welcome to the love and amen whitney yeah hey much love uh, jesus is the only way appreciate the follow there aj welcome to the love great to have you back praise god so if you guys have ever uh, read the book of james you know it, it kind of goes on onto another level um regarding maturity and faith so it is deep, but that's why we have to always pray and ask the Holy Spirit to bring us wisdom, revelation, and understanding from the scriptures. Chantal, greetings to you too. Welcome, welcome to the love. So we're going to um, take time to go through God's word. Um, if you guys want to read along with me, you can grab your Bibles, although I am reading from the new King James Version. Um... Or you can just sit back, relax, and listen. However you want to do it, Corne. Thanks for the follow. God bless, man. All right. So we'll see how, We'll see what, what God wants to do, how far we're going to read. But for now, we're only going to go through the first chapter and take our time to really um, let God speak to us. Amen. Shalom in the name of Jesus Christ, saints. Yes, to you too. Welcome, welcome. Appreciate the follow there, Chantal. Praise God. James chapter 1 from the New King James Version. Let's read James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. To the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, 
greetings. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. I mean, um, so first point we're going to look at is the trials. Uh, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Now, notice the Bible says that uh, when you fall into various trials. As a Christian, it's part of life that we go through trials. So there's no if, it's a when. When you fall into trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. <coughs> Excuse me. So the key point here is faith. Um, also, as we read, God's word says that God's promises, all his promises are yes, all his promises are amen. Um, thank you, AJ, for that heart me gift. Appreciate that. So, um, we see that God is faithful. He is the uh, most faithful. He is not a man that should lie. God is everything above us. And that's why we need to put ourselves in a position of faith. Otherwise, we are relying on ourselves. And when we rely on ourselves through the trials, we try and pull ourselves through. And that is what holds us back. That is what... Uh, keeps us from going to the next gear and moving faster. So, uh, faith, we see in action here as it's an instruction to pray, to ask God in faith with no doubting. So, that's not something that we can accomplish in our own human efforts, you know. Um, it is it is the reason why God has given us His Word, as the Bible also says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And um, the more you fill your heart with the Word of God, that is when your faith is increased. So, when you need faith, that comes from what uh, what seeds you have sown in the spirit for your soul for your spiritual love okay let's go on to verse 9 let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation but the rich in his humiliation because as follower uh, because as a follower of the field he will pass away for no sooner has the sun risen with a burning heat than it withers the grass. Its flower falls and its beautiful appearance perishes. So the rich man also will fade away in his pursuits. So that's also just such a very important key uh, to always set your mind on things above and not on things on the earth um, because those who, uh, unfortunately, who are already rich right now, thanks for that uh, confetti. I appreciate that, Papa Chat. Appreciate that, man. So, um, do not be conformed to the things of this world. And um, so, the whole mindset in this life is obviously it's is not riches. Riches are something that perishes and the importance of separating ourselves not from riches but mostly from the love of riches that's why the bible does doesn't ever say and people many uh many people get this wrong and say that money is evil 
Bible says money is evil, but money in itself isn't evil. God knows we need money, but it's the love of money that's evil, right? So the love of anything, it's not only money, the love of anything apart from God is idolatry in a way, because as the word of God also says, you cannot serve both a God and mammon. Tanjiro, welcome back to the live. Thanks for that heart me gift. I appreciate the support. Amen. All right, we're going to continue on to verse 12. Praise God. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. Oh, this is a big one. This is a very big one. This is a difficult one because... Charlene, welcome to the live. Thanks for the heart me gift. And I appreciate the uh, support there, Papa Chat. God bless, man. This, this is a big one, guys. This is a, a big one. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved he will receive the crown of life which the lord has promised to those who love him now let's also look at a key point of what jesus says thank you aj for the the mics this is also what jesus says he says okay that The flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, right? Um, let's go back to verse 12. Bless his man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Yeah, that's also what I wanted to say, actually. So, Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey my commandments, right? So, we see here... The Lord has promised to those who love Him. So, uh, loving God and obeying what He tells us goes together. You cannot obey God and not love Him. And you cannot love God and not obey Him. They go together. They are byproduct um, in a way, but they it's, it's almost like a puzzle piece you can actually worded as because they have to go together let no one say when he is tempted i am tempted by god for god cannot be tempted by evil nor does him nor does he himself tempt anyone right verse 14 but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed then when desire has conceived it gives birth to sin and sin when it is full grown brings forth death um yo tyron what's happening welcome uh back to the love aj appreciate the, the other mark there that you sent all right so um we see here that when uh then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. That's why Jesus emphasizes so much on the importance of staying away from sin. Um, and he wouldn't, he would never tell us these things if we were not capable to actually say no to temptation and to be able to live life without sin. Um, so we see here that it starts with a desire. And when that de desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin, right? You have seen many times in your life when, when Satan comes with a temptation, it starts with a thought in your head. And that thought is something that you have two choices. To ponder on that thought or to uh, resist the devil. As the Bible says in James 4, verse 7 that if you submit to god and then resist the devil he will flee from you hi marvin thanks for the heart me donovan so uh you have two choices when that temptation comes um submit to god resist the devil he will flee or you can ponder on that thought because of satan's craftiness and his deception to make you think that you're really uh not doing anything majorly wrong and God will forgive you after and all these things. It is just constantly, constantly lies as Satan will do everything he can to get us to fall. 
Um, so the key thing here is to shift our lifestyle uh, from things that do not glorify God to things that glorify God. And, and the way we do that is to fill our hearts every single day with the Word of God. That's how our faith grows. Uh, talk to God as if He is your friend. Um, a great way to honor the Lord is going on your knees and praying. And that's that's all great. And that's really um, honorable and powerful in the way you do that. As the Bible also says, when you uh, pray or prophesy, rem- uh, don't let your head be covered. Because it's a sign of uh, honor to the Lord. Um, so the way you pray is important in a way but you get to a point where you talk to God as if he's your best friend and he's sitting right there listening to everything that you have to say and the cool thing about this is that when you talk to God he knows everything about you but he wants you to confess he wants you to uh, talk to him with 100% transparency so that he can exalt you you see the Bible says when you humble yourself God will exalt you. But if you exalt yourself, that's when you humble. That's why a lot of people don't understand when they blame God for something or they say, you know, God didn't do this for me. God didn't do that for me. I'm still waiting. Why is God not moving? Um, it's, it's, it's purely because of um, where our heart is at. Our heart is set more on what we're trusting him for and not himself. So that is what it's all about. It's about our relationship with God that needs to be strengthened. And the cool thing about this, if we go to uh, James 4 verse 8, it says, if you draw near to God, God will draw near to you. When God is closer to you, you become a mighty uh, a fortress. You become a mighty uh, refuge because you've made um, Him your refuge. So when temptation comes to to uh simply say father i submit to you and i will say no to sin so i resist you satan in jesus name and by doing that satan loses his power he loses his grip on your life and peace is restored into your heart and that is the key thing raven thanks for the rose welcome amen praise god guys james one amazing how the holy spirit works just made a video love uh, love brother for jesus only i love that awesome stuff hi jp hi z welcome welcome thanks once again for praying for my dad jordan he's doing much better kiara that's awesome and all glory to god for that um yeah you see prayer has no distance praise god for that good thanks in you larger welcome to the love hey yolandi uh so yeah guys um we're gonna we're gonna finish off reading james one it's not that long but this is a really good topic tonight because it's going to help us. We, we all need the seeds of the Word of God to be continually planted in our hearts, which will produce a harvest. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is an analogy now that I've just received. Donovan, thanks for the rose. Jesus is Lord. Amen. This is the analogy that I've actually just received. This is really cool. You know how we can produce fruit, as the Bible says that... Um, you will know them by their fruit. Think about this. Think about an orchard. Um, you plant an, uh, an apple seed, right? For example, and you have all this land um, in front of you. You plant an, ap- an apple seed. Take that as one particular phrase in the bible one scripture verse or one chapter that apple seed you plant it in your field that god has given you now you take now think about this you take that scripture and you hear it again even though you've heard it before you hear it again it's a new apple seed that you plant right next to the one you just planted at the end of the day, because you've filled your heart so much with the Word of God, no matter how many times you've heard it, you are planting more and more seeds in your field. And that is 
inevitable to produce a mighty harvest, right? Think about that. Um, praise the Holy Spirit for that analogy. That's really cool. So now, say you plant apple seeds. Thanks for the heart me gift there, Tyron. So now, uh, say for example, you read the book of James and that, that is an apple seed put in the ground. But then you go to uh, 1 Corinthians. That, thanks for the cheer up, the cheer, cheer me up. Say you go to 1 Corinthians or, and 2 Corinthians or Philippians or Ephesians. You go to a different part of the word um, in your Bible time. Those then also become seeds. For example, you, you might call them uh, orange seeds or um, Nachi seeds or however you want to call them, mandarins. And they're different seeds that you get to plant in the field that God has given you. And that is when it produces a harvest. So even when you receive the word of God today and you don't see much happen, you may have revelation, you may have a peace, you may have something click uh, when you read it. But it's also a seed that gets planted. And the way we water that is we continue, um, as we just about to read, to be a doer of the word of God. That's how we uh, water the seed. And then God is the one who makes it grow. So you get all you have to do is say, yes, Lord, I will read your word. I will receive from your word. I will listen to what you want me to hear. Then you say, Lord, I'm going to be a doer of the word. I'm going to put what you've shown me into action. Faith without works is dead. So I'm going to uh, uh, take your word and put it into action and he is the one that is going to make it grow. He is the one that then, that then takes over. And that is how we flourish as Christians. Amen. Uh, sorry, I'm not reading the comments that much right now, guys. After reading James 1, we're going to take a break and see what God wants to do. If you have prayer requests, we're going to take time for that. But let's continue reading. So, do not, but, uh, do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of His own will, He brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. It's amazing how we're talking about fruit and then we read about fruit. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about flourishing as a Christian. It's not about entering into riches and glory and fame. That all belongs to God. Everything of glory, everything of uh, praise, everything of exaltation belongs to God. It is not for us to receive. God will exalt us. He will uh, do that. It's not up to us, right? So, um, if anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not brittle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless pure 
and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. You see, that's what religion really is. And as we say as Christians, it's not about religion, it's about relationship. We are talking about the message of salvation. Because you cannot get to heaven by religion. You get to heaven by relationship. Religion is still there. Unfortunately, the world has corrupted what religion, what true religion, what pure religion really is. But we read here what pure religion is. It is uh, visiting orphans before God, uh, sorry, visiting orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Um, religion is there so that we can be kept holy and set apart. Um, you know, so religion in, religion in itself doesn't get us to heaven. Um, the message of salvation is you are saved by grace uh, through faith. Amen. So anyway, um, that is the end of James chapter 1 for now. And I think we'll take some time to read James chapter 2 tomorrow, perhaps. But um, let me just put a bookmark in here. Okay, Maureen, welcome to the live. Yes, great to have you back. Laratu, thanks for the love you give there. Hey, ask Jesus why you did uh, to job. Oh, Job, evil. Well, if you actually read the book of Job, you, you can understand and see that it's not God who did that. It is Satan. Satan um, caused all these afflictions and all this disaster in Job's life. Even though he was a blameless individual, he was a blameless person. And why did God allow it to happen? We cannot talk back to God. We cannot say what God must do. Um, but he, he doesn't allow anything to happen without reason, without purpose. That's, that's one thing I've learned about God. Um, thanks for the finger hearts, Tyron. Appreciate it, brother. You know, is that God, um, he does everything with meaning, with purpose, with a reason. Amen. Uh, if I may ask, although I water my seed, everything seems to go wrong. Chantal, that's why also it reads in the beginning part of James 1 that we need to be patient. Uh, patient. We need to be in patience. And um, so that's also what the Word of God says. If you look at Isaiah 60, 22, in the right time, God will make it happen. So um, it's not up to our timing. It's all about God's timing. Um, also, sometimes we, we think we need to water seeds in an area that we think, but God didn't actually call us to do that. Um, I'm not saying that's your case, but it could be the case if you feel like uh, it's not be uh, uh, producing fruit. Um, and also, sometimes we don't expect... Uh, or, or what we expect um, doesn't come through for us because God has something else that's better for us. You know, we, we, we might ask God for uh, finances, but He wants to build our character um, before we get the finances. Because if He gave those finances to, to us right now, it would destroy us. It would take us away from God and from his glory, from his presence. That's why J uh, David, I believe it is, who prays to God in Psalm 51, 10 and 11, saying, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. That is the heart of worship. That is the heart that... God seeks in us, in His children on this earth. You see, we're always chasing something. It always seems like we after something. But if we are after God and after His heart, 
if we desire his holiness if we desire to be holy like him that is what pleases him because we do it out of faith i'm not saying that no one is allowed to ask for money or a job or whatever else bible says ask and you shall receive knock and the door will be open to you seek and you shall find um so it's wisdom you know and we 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 understand we get this wisdom from god from the holy spirit uh maureen maureen uh believe i greeted you earlier already the holy spirit gives us insight on right and wrong also very true and that is why we need the holy spirit as christians we don't only need to be baptized by water but baptized in the holy spirit we just hit 10k likes well done guys i'm tapping the screen um worm jock thanks for the heart me gift welcome to the live worm i hope you're doing well and uh i love you jordan a lot what a blessing you are to my spiritual love happy to see you live again Fr uh, frightened yes it's been a while great to have you back much love back to you brother and yes uh thea hi welcome to the live sorry i'm way behind uh messages does one need to be baptized to enter heaven good question and i believe that as much as it is instructed for us to be baptized it's for our benefit to live as a christian and to be baptized for the remission of sins and so on but there are no i don't believe there's any biblical uh, scripture that speaks um as if you will not make it to heaven if you do not get baptized uh wins thanks for the mic i appreciate that so you know if if a, if a person is on their deathbed and they give their lives to jesus but they never lived for him they never got baptized they never read the bible god will still have grace on that person because um god is just and faithful to forgive and he wants everyone to come to repentance so god has grace on a person um that they can make it to heaven even though they didn't live for him because of the choice he made before he died um so yeah can, can you pray for my if she is having oh okay you say boyfriend but she how does that work <laughs> sorry larger having a hard time with health issues just now and i'm worried elijah don't know who it is okay but we're just gonna lift it up and pray uh the request that you have and lift you up in prayer and the person that you're talking about with the health issues father god we just pray for elijah right now and we thank you father god for not only uh restoration in this person's life that needs healing but restoration and truth in elijah's life father god i pray that your will be done in elijah's life that you give him peace give him truth give him freedom give him direction father as you love him lord regardless of what he's chosen to do and everything he's done in his life you know father god that your word says we have all sinned and fallen short to the glory of god so show us lord your ways so we can turn to repentance turn away from sin and, and to repentance lord as your word says lord that we would as a people come together and humble ourselves and pray that you will heal the land in jesus name bless your name father we thank you for doing a mighty work in elijah's life and in this person's life that elijah has asked for father in jesus name amen God is good. All right. Thank you, Frighten. Glory to God. Uh, yeah, I don't mind you being a mod at all, Tyron. You know, you know, fam. Uh, I will definitely.
uh, without a doubt make you mod but I also think that eventually I'm gonna have to um, reset my mods and I, I, I thought about actually going to refresh the whole thing and not have mods um, but yeah I just don't know how to make you mod now now I do there you go okay so we're not gonna block we're just gonna mute because yeah I, I'd rather not block anyone I'd rather just mute them if they're really causing havoc on the live but that's also one thing I don't want to do is because if an individual comes into the live and they highly against your beliefs and all that and they're causing havoc on the lives maybe then they do need to be muted that's that's fine but what's cool is that they hear and that they're listening and they can receive something they can have seeds sown into their hearts that will produce a harvest in the future all right uh but yeah 100 percent trish peace uh, peace and blessings to you too amen thank you first time watching thanks for your teaching uh oh, glory to god it's not my teaching it's the word of god that we like we like to share with each other here so praise god but thank you join uh, for joining the love donald welcome to the love uh lian liani or liani welcome jordan mind subbing to my youtube channel his sheep studio no problem for sure man i'm okay thanks busy with 70 times 7 course at church now wow that's cool that's cool um nice to hear though excuse me for my first time jordan joining your live i'd love to join again that's awesome chantal you're always very welcome this is just a nice chill thing that we like to do actually every night but i haven't been back for quite a while so we want to make it a daily thing again um to spend time with god and his word and all that how often do you do these lives i like to do it um every night lara too thanks for that um love you love you gift okay let me just check sorry um here's sheep studio his sheep studio oh best friend elijah i get you brother i get you no worries but we've prayed we've prayed amen i have a prayer request for my son Renil. it's he is a very very a rebellious son okay Chantal and let's all just come together and pray for Chantal's son Renil guys father God we thank you for Renil and we just pray for uh, Chantal as she's agreeing with this prayer Lord that you will come through and bring your child back bring Renil back father God from the darkness from um, rebellion and father God I pray that you would um, snatch him out of Satan's hand out of his grip father God strengthen his mind and bring him back I pray for his salvation I pray for his life father God in Jesus name amen amen uh, Claire, welcome to the love excuse me Corne, amen prayer request thank you wins for that Heart me gift god bless prayer request can you please pray for all of us to have faith like a kid yes i love that childlike faith is so important corne thank you father god for this request as corne has mentioned lord that we would be built up in faith F uh, childlike faith father god faith like a kid thank you lord that that we can believe in you no matter what the circumstances no matter uh, what the worries and the cares of life are father god build us up in your most holy faith in jesus name amen that's actually a very powerful prayer request i love that cotton shell from trish thank you for that and the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of oh, okay how do you mean sorry um maybe you sent a message before i didn't see i type best friend then autocorrect jumped oh no uh thank you bro yeah i know the rules at least 100 percent Tyron. you know we we uh like brothers man we even look alike as everyone calls us twins so <laughs> you know we we go a long way back brother on 
you know, I can trust you being a mod, um, but I actually, I like to veer away from the whole mod thing eventually, but I don't mind. Uh, hopefully, but most of the time when someone is muted, they get offended and just leave. Yeah, that's, that's what we want to avoid, Ruth, as you can see. It's good to mute them so that we have order here and hear God's or God word or God's word without disturbances. I mean, that can be beneficial for sure. But we see that the Bible says that Satan is prowling around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So um, Satan is always after there uh, to get at you and cause a disturbance and all that. But our job is to love. Our job is to uh, do what God tells us to do. If, if God lays on your heart to mute someone, then do it. So I think the best way to go about about it is actually praying. Say, Lord, should this person be uh, muted? <coughs> Excuse me, or not? And then you'll have revelation. You'll have peace about making a decision. Must say, I really missed your lives, bro. It's good to see you back again. Appreciate that comment. Yes, it's good to be back. Glory to God. Um, amen. Fully a hey, good to see you too on the live. Appreciate you joining. What time will the lives be happening? I have been missing them. Wins. Yes. Um, we try to do it every night. You know, um, no promises though, but try to do it every night. Amen, Chantal. Amen. Receive that prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. May we please ask the Ma to remove should atheists and other religions join we are here to praise god absolutely we are here to praise god but i truly welcome everyone to join the love because um the, the 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 reason we are christians is not only so that we can disciple each other is that we can share the light of christ with all those around us who need jesus there are many people in this world that are lost you are saved and I am saved. By the grace of God, we get to be with the Lord for eternity, should we make it by His grace, right? And that is great. But there are so many lost souls out there that we are, that God is calling us to um, bring in. Um, even people who call themselves Christians but haven't been living for God, they have received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They've done this and that, but they've strayed from God. They've, they've uh, strayed from a heart of repentance. And that is when people also need to be brought back. Um, amen. Tyron, thanks for the finger hearts, my bro. Uh, Chizzy, welcome to the love. We should do the twin loves again sometime. No promises, but yes, I think we should do it sometime again, man. Um, thanks for the roses, bud. Uh, praying from Canada, Ontario. We should pray for what's going on in Hawaii. Chris, that's great to hear. And yes, we thank you, Father God, for uh, Hawaii, Lord, and for everything that's going on with the devastation. We pray for mighty restoration, for unexpected restoration. Um, and and rebuilding, Father God, and 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 you'd bring you, you'd call your people back, Father God, bring them together, let them join together, humble themselves and pray, so you will heal the land, Father, in Jesus' name. Yeah, I, I personally believe that in a country or in a place where there's devastation, there is mighty power at hand with the people's prayers, as the Bible says, if you will humble yourself and pray. You know, so yeah, awesome. John 3, 5, Jesus wants us to be born by water and spirit. Baptism is a physical action to renew mind. Absolutely, uh, Kunrat, I do agree with you and I appreciate you adding that in there. Kunrat, also great to see you on the live. How are you doing, man? Water baptism is important because the promise is that we will receive the Holy Spirit after baptism. Praise God. Um, Good to see you again, Brother Jordan. Yes, sir. Appreciate that. Thanks for the gifts there, Tyron. Uh, Jordan, can I ask you something, please? Absolutely. I'm one of those people I lost 
uh, my way. I tried to live for the Lord, but after a few weeks, I stopped. You see, Laratu, that's exactly why this love also exists, so that we can bring in people who are believers, but they need their faith needs to be restored. Philly, thanks for the roses. Oh, yes, Lord, heal the land. We humble ourselves before your throne. That is powerful. Amen. So, yeah, finally caught up with all the, the messages, but praise God, guys. Um, any more prayer requests, you can put that in the chat. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Megan, I'm still waiting for your question. And you guys are doing a, you have done a fantastic job uh, tapping the screen with the 13.1K likes we now have. But um, praise God, guys, uh, we're going to be looking at James chapter 2. Tomorrow night, if all goes well, we'll be back. Uh, just skip the not-so-positive reactions. Are you okay? Henrik, welcome to the live. How do you mean, man? My prayer request is to have spiritual insight like you. Praise God, Frighten. I mean, it just comes by uh, uh, living for God and, 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 and the hunger that you have for God and for the things of God, for the presence of God. That's really when you get to have revelation and wisdom in life. And I'm still young in that. You know, we, we're all still learning. And But it's, it's revelation. And, and when you see the world the way God sees the world, um, your viewpoint on life changes from everything the way you thought before, pretty much. And you, you see what is now more important. And that is, that is the, the revelation we all need to live in. Okay. Um, praying for God's intervention in my finances, especially house payments. I believe in God of miracles. Amen. Fully, and I believe with you, and I thank you, Father God, for fully for uh, finances and for everything that is needed, Father God, that you would come through and everything will be sorted, everything will be paid at the end of the day, Father God, you get the glory. So I pray for your goodness in Philly's life. In Jesus' name, amen. What God are you into and why? Henrique, there's only one and true God, the Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. I believe in what the Bible says. I'm a Bible-believing person, Christian. Um, it's not just a belief it's it's a experience it's a life it's a relationship it's a revelation so the bible says that um uh to be transformed by the renewing of your mind so uh also the bible says that satan blinds the minds of unbelievers and um so if you're not a believer in God, there is unfortunately a, uh, a blindness that's keeping you between you and the truth. And the Bible says, truth, the truth shall set you free. And Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. So um, many people are firm believers in their religion, whether it be whatever. Um, and they think that that is the only way to heaven. I think they think that that is the right way. But when you experience Jesus, you can see clearly that there is no other way except through Jesus. So um, that is the message. And I can tell you without a doubt, if every person in any other religion were to experience Jesus, they would see everything, see the truth, be set free and say, wow, I was wrong. I was wrong, you know, because all these things are man-made. Think about it. Every single religion out there except Christianity is man-made. It is, it is after Christianity. Christianity is even, a, it, it's a word that was um, created. It is at a certain point in time, but people in the old testament as like moses abraham isaac jacob elijah elisha 
all the great prophets of old, um, you couldn't have call, called them Christians because Jesus hadn't yet died on the cross and rose from the dead. But as the Bible says, they were counted as righteous. You see, and that's what it's all about. Christianity is just a word. Uh, being a believer, being a follower of Christ is really what it is. And it's it's not about religion that gets you to heaven. It's not a religion that you get you get saved. It's a relationship with your creator. So that is why Christianity is um, being a follower of Christ who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. If you look at all other religions, they all have a beginning and it never goes uh, beyond God. It never goes before God. God was always there um, before with Jesus. As it says, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. So Jesus and then it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us talking about Jesus Jesus is the word so um, Jesus existed before time began he existed with God he was with God and he was God in the beginning and that is what all other religions who say they believe in the same God but they doubt Jesus um, and, 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 and that is that is their downfall is because they don't believe in in Jesus that's why the Bible says for God so loved the world in every other religion that might be very true that yes God does love the world but he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him whoever believes in Jesus Christ will not perish but have eternal life that is the message that is the truth that is what people shy away from because of their beliefs and their um religious systems anyway there's a lot of comments guys sorry that i haven't gotten back to it anyway we have uh so much to rejoice for brother amen yes sir uh jesus saved my life when i called upon his name when eight people with guns tried to hijack me brother when did this happen that is quite a testimony i tell you And also, Henrique uh, says there's no proof. That is also the one th thing that um, if you want to become a believer, you need to put one side. Because um, when people, when the Pharisees or whoever in the Bible ask Jesus for a son, no son was given them except the son of Jonah, that Jesus would die um, and be in the belly of the earth for three days, three nights. That was the only sign that was given to them was a, 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 a Old Testament uh, story about Jonah who was swallowed up by a fish. And uh, as he was in the belly of a fish for three days and three nights, so the Lord Jesus would be in the belly of the earth, in the heart of earth, in the center of the earth for three days and three nights, which is um where hell is right so when people in the world today who are not believers ask for a sign they ask for evidence they ask for a proof what do you think is going to happen you're not going to get a sign you're not going to get a proof because it doesn't work like that it's almost like saying Prove to me that you can get clean before getting into the bath. It doesn't work like that. You have to get into the bath first so that you can get clean. You have to believe in God first before you can see the truth. And that's what a lot of people miss out on. So yeah, that's just my answer to that. But much respect. Um, okay. Yes, Dev, you can ask any question for sure. Jesus is the only way. Come to him before it's too late. Amen. I wish God can take that thing 
in me to speak or preach about his word, especially on the bus. Uh, Rerus, ask, ask God and he will give it to you for sure. Also, like I believe that that will be so cool and honorable to the Lord to be able to minister like that. And I just pray for anointing and Lord, if it's your will that you would bring this person up to uh, be a shining light for you, Father God, and that this person will have boldness from the Holy Spirit to, to preach. If it's your will, Father God, let it be done in Jesus' name. Also, one thing we must always keep in mind is that we are not all called to be pastors and 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 apostles and prophets and evangelists and teachers you know um we need to know our calling but if you have a desire in your heart uh like a really burning desire in your heart to witness and to preach that is a good indication and a good sign that god has called you to preach and then you seek him on your position you don't just step into whatever you seek him for that position amen another tiktoker said we have and we will suffer condemnation like other countries well uh steph yeah so if we look at the word of god it says that there is no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus that's why we are separate from the world the bible says friendship with the world is enmity with god so it doesn't matter what's going on in the countries it doesn't matter what's going on in the world we need to focus on christ because we are not condemned in christ there's no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus condemnation are for those who reject jesus it is for the world and not for us you see we live on earth as citizens of heaven we are not part of this world. We are only living on the world. But we are in fact seated in heavenly places. That's really cool. When you truly search for Jesus, he reveals himself to you supernaturally. Amen to that. Uh, obliged to, to have it like Jesus did, meaning torture to give up. So a lot of people... Uh, Constort or uh, corrupt the teachings of Jesus and the sufferings that we partake in. Um, if you read the epistles, um, you will see that the sufferings, as Paul says, we suffer um, for Christ. We do it for Jesus. Are you willing to suffer for Jesus? It's it's part of the process, and it's not that we have to live in pain the rest of our lives god is our redeemer he is our restorer he is our refuge and our deliverer but there are going to be persecutions there are going to be rejections there are going to be um mockers there are going to be those who disagree with you and who want to fight with you but the fight is not against flesh and blood but against principalities powers and darkness that's why god also allows us um, to go through seasons of certain suffering and discipline so that he can build us strong to a point where when persecution comes we count it all joy um, she said is to prove that you won't give up on God we would be tortured um, yeah, no, I mean, also Satan wants you to believe the lies that God inflicts pain and um, causes people to live in torture. But, you know, the Bible says that Satan comes to kill, steal and destroy. But Jesus came that there may be life and life more abundantly. So um, it is not God who tortures us. Um, Satan is the one who uh, tortures people. Um, with him and his cohorts and his demons. Um, so, there's a big misconception and a big lie that Satan loves to make people believe regarding um, their sufferings, which is not always from God. 
is not always um, good. Like some of the sufferings we go for, we go through are good. Um, and we do it for Jesus. Um, but certain other sufferings such as sickness and disease and all that, God wants us to be set free from that. It's not God's will for us to suffer in uh, afflictions and, and ail, um, ailments, injuries, pain, suffering in that kind of manner. The, uh, the, the kind of suffering we go through as Christians is persecution, is, is kind of a slap in the face from the world. But then we've got to be able to turn, out, turn the other cheek. And the only way we can do that is because of the love of Christ that we have received. Amen. Anyway, Revelation 2, 7, uh, 21, 7. He who overcomes will receive all things and I will be his God and he will be my son. Amen. Another TikTok has said, okay, so I already read that. Amen. Thanks, Jordan, for the awesome message. Keep it up. Looking forward for tomorrow's life. Sounds good, Corne. Awesome. What's your religion? So I'm not, I, I don't want to say I'm in any religion. As much as Christianity could be labeled as a, a religion, um, you can call call me a Christian, but it's really just a follower of Christ is is what I'd like to call myself uh, eternally. Okay. Anyway, uh, tomorrow exactly two years ago, I stepped out of hospital after being on a ventilator for four weeks. Yes, Um Jacques has a great testimony. On that and I remember you talking about it before it's powerful so lately I don't have the motivation to spend time with God would you happen to know why Megan yes Satan is out there to try and distract you and you what you need right now Megan is um, the the Word of God that says we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus so um, Satan wants you to believe that you've lost motivation and you cannot do anything about it. You have to wait until you are encouraged and motivated again to spend time with Jesus. That is the deception. That is the lie that Satan wants. Not only you, Megan, but everyone, even myself, to believe is that if we don't have energy to spend time with God, if we're not motivated to spend time with God, we should wait. That's really when we do need to spend time with God. And I find myself actually feeling highly convicted when I know I should spend time with God but I don't feel like spending time with God that's when I just you know say listen uh, sacrifice uh, what's the word the sentence obedience is better than sacrifice right so um, to get onto your knees and, 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 and pray when you don't feel like it is when it becomes actually one of the most powerful prayers that you pray um, because you are basically agreeing with the fact that Satan is under your feet and you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus so whenever you feel like you don't have motivation to spend time with God just say a very simple quick prayer speak God's words that say submit to God resist the devil and he will flee and then you say Lord Help me. Help me to, to hunger for you. I want to hunger for you, Father God. Why am I not hungry for you? Um, you, pray, you, you? You talk to God about the problems. You say, Lord, why am I not motivated to spend time with you? That is what God wants with us. He wants us to uh, be in conversation with Him. Um, that we are completely open and honest about what is going on in our life. Because He already knows it. But when we ask of him, that's when he moves. You see, sometimes we wait for God to give us things, but we, we, we didn't ask. So we need to put ourselves in a position to ask. That's why God instructs us in his word to uh, ask and you shall receive. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. Seek and you shall find. Draw near to God and God will draw near to you. Amen. But that's a good question. I love that because it relates to a lot of us. We've all, I believe, been through that, even myself. Jordan, hey, hope you're okay. Lindsay, welcome back to the love. Uh, yes, 
I'm well by the grace of God. Um, it's been a rough road in the last little while, so yeah, but God is good. 2011 is when God saved your life. Uh, Gunrat, that's awesome, brother. Praise God. Praise God for that. Hello, my fellow Christians. Migs, welcome. Welcome. Uh, God is faith, and without faith, then you don't believe in God. Yeah, you have to have faith. You have to just believe. Name a person the devil has killed. I'll wait. They, they, you, cannot, you cannot put a, a list on things. Uh, for example, Judas. Judas. Uh, Judas Iscariot. When he betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. After he knew what he did had been very wrong. He killed himself. But he, he could have, he could have repented. I mean, Peter denied Jesus, and yet came back and repented. I believe. So, yeah. And you say the list of people God has murdered is too long to list. You see, that is the whole deception. Satan wants people to believe that God comes to kill steal and destroy when God's word himself says Satan has come to kill steal and destroy so and you say but why God why doesn't God just um kick Satan out out the door off the earth um it's because his time is set his time is set and it, it all has to go according to God's word what is written in God's word because nothing can change what has been written in God's word there's a place called the lake of fire that is reserved for Satan his demons and every person who rejects Jesus every person who didn't live for Jesus every person um, who chose to reject God they made their choice which is very sad even though God has given them chance after chance after chance there's a place reserved for them and God doesn't want them to go there. God desires everyone to come to repentance and by everyone it means everyone. It doesn't just mean half, doesn't just mean 60%, doesn't mean 99%, it means 100%. God will go after the one and leave the 99. That is the character, the heart of God. But yet people slap God in the face by saying I want to live how I want to live I don't want to give up this and that just for for, for well, uh, Christianity or going to church and that's a deception that Satan keeps people in that's why we need to pray for our loved ones as much as we need to witness to them we must also pray for them um, because we need to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling and it's a serious thing you know anyway but yeah that's that's good good conversation right here i'm going to be ending the live pretty soon guys and i think we're going to leave it for tomorrow again but it's been great being back on the live matt thanks for the ice cream cones i appreciate it yeah um hi brother and brothers and sisters in christ rose welcome to the love something people don't understand is god gives us free will our ancestors Adam and Eve chosen true very true thank you for the heart me gift there I appreciate that uh, sorry guys there's so many messages I'm not gonna be able to read Greg welcome to the live how are you how do we spend time with God Thomas good question we spend time with God by going on our knees closing the door going on our knees and as Jesus teaches us to pray our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, power and glory forever and ever. Amen. If you do not know how to pray, go read Matthew 6 verse 9 to 13. That is that prayer that you can pray every single day it's the way jesus teaches us to pray but over, over and above that you can talk to god and spend time with him 
in a way as if you're talking to a friend that is what God that is what Jesus wants for us he wants us to be his friend no greater love than for a man to lay down his life for his friends so Jesus wants to call us his friends imagine I have a question yeah shoot I normally have conversations with God when I'm driving it's mainly me just talking and that is exactly a great example Matt I love that you don't have to be in your room and close your door even uh, when you spend time with God you can be anywhere and spend time with God that is how that is it thank God for people like you uh, silver praise God glory to God I mean all thanks to him and thank you for your comments amen Amen. Thank you. Matthew 6 verse 18. Right. No, Matthew 6 verse 9 to 13. I can even read it for you and uh, double check it for you. Matthew 6 verse 9 to 13. In this manner, therefore, pray. And that's the Lord's Prayer. As many people very well know. How can we know God is listening? Well, that is what it um, requires faith. Uh, it requires faith. And faith without works is dead. So speak to God as if he is listening. That is putting faith into action. That is when faith is not dead because you put it into action. Faith without works is dead. So, um, but there's a deeper understanding, deeper meaning of what it means by uh, faith without works is dead and we can do a study on it one day but um, yeah it is um, you you know when you pray to God you have to know that you have to believe that he is otherwise I you know there's no point <laughs> you know there's no point in even praying if you don't believe in in God and 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 so you got to get your your mind past the lies of Satan that's telling you that God doesn't exist um, and 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 if you if you really struggle with this here's what you can do you can say god if you are real if you are really listening to me show me that is a request the bible says let your requests be made known to god that is a request and god will grant that and he will speak to you he will show you and then that is when your faith continues to grow. Because next time when you go and pray, you, you're not going to be asking God the same thing to show you if he is real. You're just going to pray and say, wow, Father God, you showed me something really cool. I'm, I, I know you there. I know you exist. So then you talk to him. Um, also, what's very important that is if you haven't made a choice to actually receive Jesus Christ into your heart, that is also what sometimes a boundary that's keeping you from really listening to God. Um, so making the choice to live for Jesus, making the choice to receive Jesus is the first uh, decision that you have to make. It is the first step in growing in your relationship with God. So, you know, the Bible says in Romans 10 verse 9 that if you confess, confess with your mouth, that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead you will be saved uh, but it's not a prayer we just pray once it's a it's a life we choose to live as the Bible also says take up your cross daily and follow Christ so yeah it goes deep but that's a starting point but great questions I love the question the questions there Thomas very cool Many have requested for God to show his existence and many have not received that proof. I mean, you can also say that, but also people, you know, they believe in God, but they slanderers. They believe in God. They know God exists, but they angry at him. So they say, Lord, show me who you are. Show me, show if you really love me, then do this for me. They know he exists, but they angry at him. How is God to reply at a person that hates him you, you, you know so we gotta we gotta come before God with humble hearts um, that's really when he is able to come in because of our humility we drop our pride you see pride is what God hates so very much God opposes the proud but he gives grace to the humble 
It's written in scripture. Go read it. Very powerful. God bless. Anyway, love you guys. I'll be seeing you guys again tomorrow night. I'm sorry I'm going to be ending it right now. There's so much more to talk about and I did not get to every comment. I do apologize. But love you guys. I just pray for the peace of Jesus to rest upon you guys. And I'll see you guys tomorrow night again. So God bless. What time tomorrow? Thomas, I'd like to start at 8 p.m. South African Standard Time. Uh, that is 8 p.m. South African Standard Time. But I can't promise you it will be exactly at that time because sometimes the load shedding schedule changes. Although I don't think we're going to have load shedding tomorrow at 8. So we'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. South African Standard Time. Uh, love you guys. May God bless you all. And come back to spend more time with God and with more Q&As, more prayer requests, more prayer, more Bible reading. It's, it's, um, it's cool. It's fellowship. Amen. God bless you too, Charlene. You too, Wim Jacques. Take care. God bless. It's four right now. Yeah, Thomas, you probably on the other side of the globe. But it was great having you on the live. Great questions. And thanks everyone for joining in. That's why I say South African Standard Time. Because I'm in South Africa, Johannesburg. So if you look at SAST on Google, you will see um, that it is now currently just over. Ju it's just five past 10 so it's 10 p.m in south africa right now just five past so yeah anyway god bless you guys love you all see you tomorrow night again take care